Good evening everyone. Tonight I am at Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Terminal 2, for my flight with AirAsiaX to Perth. On the way into the departures area, you will be bombarded with plenty of shops and food stores. Over the top, we can see AirAsia proudly displaying their award as the best low-cost airline for the 13th year in a row. This is indeed pretty impressive, with over a decade of dominance in the Asian market. Walking further ahead, we pass this mini outdoor area with the KLAA Terminal 2 logo. You can certainly feel the humidity here also. Heading back inside, we can see a giant TV with departure information. My flight today is D7236 to Perth, Australia. Self-check-in kiosks are available for you to complete your check-in. These machines were very simple to use. Self-backdrop counters are also available, and if you ever get stuck, there are also regular AirAsia counters available. After checking in, there are a ton of local and international shops to check out at KLA2. Whether it's fashion or fast food, this place has got you covered. It's a good time now to bring up that I needed to go to the AirAsia sales office a week before this flight as I had some issues. Basically, I had problems purchasing the FastPass add-on for my flight. This provides up to 14 kilograms of cabin baggage and a fast lane for immigration. Other benefits are also given, but these were the main two items I was after. Each fast pass costs $20 Australian per person, so for two of us traveling today, that's $40 in total. To select the fast pass add-on, I logged into my accounts at AirAsia and found the option and selected it for both of us. This was easy enough to find and select. The problem came however at the payment page. As you can see, the total cost is nearly 3 times the correct amount. Instead of $40, it was showing I need to pay $114.80 Australian. Now I did think, maybe I accidentally selected some other add-ons too, and I checked a couple of times. I did confirm there was nothing else selected, and what was more bizarre was that the total cost would change sometimes. Something was definitely wrong, and I needed to reach out to customer support. The first point of contact you will be guided to is AirAsia's chatbot called Bo. After beginning the chats, Bo will present you with options to direct your query. Unfortunately, after many attempts at various options, Bo just couldn't understand the issue I was having. This was actually very frustrating, and what was worse was that there was no option to escalate to a real person. So I decided to ditch Bo and look for contact numbers on AirAsia's support page instead. I thought everything now was going to be okay as I found the number for Australia, which was 24 hours. However, upon closer inspection, I realized the number was just a voicemail, and this was the case for most of the other regions too. So anyways, I caught the number and left a summary of the problem in a voicemail, and I hope somebody will call me back pretty soon. The next day, I received a response back, however, it was via email which was surprising. Further to this, the problem I stated in the voicemail was completely disregarded, so I had to repeat myself once again. This whole process was getting very difficult, but anyways, I responded back to the email with all the relevant details. AirAsia then responded back with obvious checks to perform which I already did and showed them before. I let them know that yes, of course, it was double even triple checked and that I needed a real person to assist with my issue. AirAsia then responded with whatever reason a frequently asked questions page which didn't help at all. They then said I need to make payment first via my booking which is exactly the problem I'm trying to solve. To end, they said I should contact the AirAsia customer support page for further assistance, which is exactly how I ended up here in the first place. Clearly, I wasn't being listened to and was running around in circles. The only option left was to find a real person at the AirAsia sales office at KLIA2. When I arrived, there was a staff member on her phone who looked up as I approached the counter. I told her about the issue with the FastPass add-on, and all she said was, you can't buy the FastPass after you've booked your flight. She then returned to looking at her phone and didn't seem to care much. This didn't make any sense as it was clearly a selectable option in the add-on section within my bookings. At this point, I didn't want to argue and just gave up and left. The whole experience was a complete waste of time. Chatting a bow was pointless, calling the voicemail was useless, and now speaking to an actual person was also useless. Back to tonight's flight. The security clearance is at the back of the departures area. Be prepared as your boarding pass and hand carry luggage weight will be checked. After this, there are plenty of duty free shops as you walk towards your gate area. My flight today is departing from gate Q10. 
It is quite a distance to cover, so expect about a 10 minute walk time. Fortunately, there are plenty of travelators that will speed up your journey. As we cross the bridge, we can see plenty of AirAsia A320s parked overnight, ready for flights tomorrow. After a couple more travelators, I was nearly at the end. This area is called Araman, and it also contains plenty of shops which you can browse through. At the back, there is a pretty big food court with international and local restaurants. Unfortunately, as it was midnight, there wasn't much stores that were open, but during the day, this place gets busy from my previous times here. There is plenty of tables as well, and this is definitely a good place to get some food before your next flight. On the opposite side, there is the Sama Sama Hotel Express and Travel Club Lounge. A tip here is that you can shower at the Travel Club Lounge for 20 ringgit. This is perfect for travellers like me whose flight is late at night. After checking out from the hotel in the morning and spending a whole day out in KL, a shower is definitely needed. The shower was pretty clean and you'll be provided with a towel after you pay at the front desk. Once you're done, head downstairs to where the gates are. There are plenty of shops here also, but once again, a lot are closed as it is now nearly 1am. Down near the WH Smith shop, there is a cool little area called the Sports Lounge. This is more like a little quiet rest area with views of some AirAsia aircraft. Tonight, we can see a total of 6 AirAsia A330s parked at the gates. Coming back out, we approach the entrance to gates Q1 to Q21. Here, you will be security screened for a second time. Gate Q10 is a 5 minute walk past security. The seating area was about to open with a queue forming outside. Tonight's flight is looking pretty full. Here's tonight's aircraft, an Airbus A330 registered as 9 Mike X ray X ray uniform. This aircraft is 9.2 years old. Boarding commenced on time at about 1 am. Stepping on board, I was greeted by a friendly cabin crew. Tonight, I'm seated in 8A. The legroom is average and the seats have a pitch of 32 inches and a width of 16.5 inches. I'm also located in the quiet zone which is only available to passengers age 10 and above. On the side, there is a little space between your seat and the panel. Looking in the seat pockets, there is a duty-free magazine with items you can purchase on board. As well as this, the food and drinks menu are also provided at affordable prices. Just keep in mind, most major currencies are accepted, but change is only given in Malaysian Ringgit. Looking at the cabin, it was completely full in the quiet zone. At 1.55am, the doors were closed and we began pushback. After takeoff, the cabin crew soon came around and offered food and drinks. To get ready, I took the tray table down, which was very clean. It is also adjustable if required. 
Tonight, I pre-ordered the chicken rice, which came with chili and soy sauces. A bottle of water is also included. The chicken rice was fantastic and full of flavour. AirAsia's meals are certainly worth it. The cabin crew then came around and handed out the Australian arrival cards. Make sure you declare everything required as you enter Australia. Heading to the lavatories, they were kept very clean, which was a pleasant experience. Other than that, there's nothing special about the toilets on the AirAsia A330. After coming back to my seat, the lights were completely dimmed for passengers to sleep. At just over 3am, it's time for me to have a nap. A few hours later, I woke up to the dawn breaking over Western Australia. With just under 2 hours left to go, we were nearing arrival in Perth. Looking at the scores for this flight, the cabin crew were very nice and attentive. As this was a late overnight flight, they didn't bug passengers to buy any duty free items. Usually, on day flights, the cabin crew come down the aisle about 3 times during the flight for duty free shopping. They clearly understood that passengers just wanted to sleep and weren't interested in anything else. So therefore, it's a strong 9 out of 10 for this category. For food and drinks, this is an area where AirAsia does well. The meal I had today was delicious, so it's also a 9 out of 10. For comfort, the seats were average for the overnight flight, but the quiet zone was definitely worth it to get some rest. This gets an 8 out of 10 for me. For timeliness, we left Kuala Lumpur 20 minutes late, but will end up arriving 20 minutes earlier at Perth. The journey today took only 5 hours overall, so it's 10 out of 10 for this category. For this flight, I'm adding another score for sales support as it is relevant. As you saw earlier in the video, my experience with AirAsia customer support was extremely difficult. I didn't like any of their support options and I think this needs to be improved a lot. The AI chatbot called Bo is the first point of contact who can only handle basic issues. Good luck trying to solve anything complex. For this category, it's a very disappointing 1 out of 10. Wrapping everything up, we get a score of 7.4 out of 10. The flight was decent, however, the overall experience was let down by the lackluster customer support. Let me know in the comments on how your experience with AirAsia's customer support has been. I'm sure I'm not the only person that's disappointed by this. That brings an end to this review. As always, please leave a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe for more content. See you next time! Yes, we have just let that in the additional airport and we are busy from you.